Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug, and the AP Chemistry 2022 free response questions have just been released. So I'm going to go ahead and try to work through number six with you today. This is a four pointer. Uh, and once again, just a disclaimer, I am not AP. I'm not the college board. I am just some guy. I am an AP Chemistry teacher who has successfully taught AP Chemistry for the last 22 years to, to hundreds of students over the years. Uh, I'm going to do my best to uh, to share the answer with you. If you like what you see, if you uh, learn something from this, uh, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because we're going to be going over these uh, the entire free response set over the next couple days. So let's jump right into part A here. So here we have a uh, a spectrophotometry experiment, and we're trying to find the the concentration of permanganate. In the solution, and this works very well for spectrophotometry because permanganate uh, containing solutions are purple in color, generally speaking. So the question in part A is what is the optimum wavelength that you should select? And generally speaking, what you want to do is find the, uh, the frequency, the wavelength that has the highest absorbance while there is the lowest amount of interference. Now, fortunately, there doesn't say anything about interference in this problem, so it's pretty easy just to pick that spot right up there, which seems to be right around the 525 nanometer mark. And so that would be your answer for part A, just 525 nanometers. Moving on to part B, we have a question where we're, where we're basically asked to read a graduated cylinder. And so uh, it basically just says, what volume should the student record as you read the graduated cylinder? Well, hopefully you can see that it's, you know, here's 90, there's 91, and there's 92. And so it's 92, but remember, whenever you read uh, something that's a, a measurement device that's that's analog, you have to read between the lines. You have to estimate one decimal place. When you give a, a measurement, you always want to give all the digits that you know, that you're sure of, plus one digit that you're unsure of. So that would be 92. Now to me, it looks like it's right on that line. So I would call this a 92.0 milliliters. That's how I would read that. Uh, now, you might look at that and say maybe it's just a hair underneath that and call it maybe 91.9, or you may say it's just a hair above that and call it 92.1 milliliters, but you've got to be pretty close to that, somewhere around that 92.0 milliliters. And uh, I, I think this is one of those questions where they do expect you to, to, to express an answer to the tenths of a milliliter, nothing more, nothing less. And so I think that's that's what you'd need to get the point for that one. Now part two for this one, uh, we're trying to dilute something down. It says we have a stock solution that's 2.40 times 10 to the negative third molar of the permanganate ion. And it says how much of this are we going to need to produce 100.0 mils of a 1.68 times 10 to the negative third molar permanganate solution. So this is the type of problem where you would need to use the uh, the uh, a dilution equation m1 v1 equals m2 v2 this is not the only way to solve this problem but this is how I teach my students to do it and we just plug and chug so the starting molarity is the stock solution that's the 2.40 times 10 to the negative third molar and then the volume of that solution well that's what we're trying to solve for so v1 is our unknown M2, your final molarity, is the standard 1.68 times 10 to the negative third molar. And V2, the final volume, is the 100.0 milliliters. So now all we have to do is do the algebra here. And when you solve for V1, I get an answer of about 70.0 milliliters. And so that's the answer to B2. So one point for that one. And I think it hopefully it goes without saying one point for part A as well. So we're up to three points. We have the last point here, which is part C. And they have a fairly lengthy description here. If you've studied this, you may not even necessarily need to, to read all this because it just gives you the, the little uh, 
procedure for what happens here oh, with the cuvette that you put the the solution in there you rinse it with standard solution fill it with standard solution uh, you measure the absorbance and go through these for each of the standard solutions now we have an outlier as you can see here as you make the calibration curve this little dot right here is too low and if you watch my videos about this lesson 21 actually specific, looks actually has a graph almost identical to this to, to be completely honest so we hit this one right on uh, if the dot on your calibration curve is too low that means that the concentration of whatever it is that you were measuring was was too low and so since the absorbance was too low you want to say that the concentration was too low. Now, the question is actually saying, uh, identify which one of the procedural steps the student could have executed incorrectly, that it would explain why the marked data point is below the line of best fit. And at this point, it might be one of these issues here with somewhere with steps two and three okay so at some point it sounds like the concentration is too low because maybe first one possibility is that there's distilled water that got into the cuvette that didn't get completely cleaned out and so this is perhaps a a fault in step three that they didn't really rinse the cuvette with the standard solution as they were supposed to, and they just left the, 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 that distilled water in there. Uh, a, a different possibility is it's not just contaminated with distilled water. It's possible that it's contaminated with a solution of a lower concentration. So it's possible that they just forgot to do step two and maybe even the first part of step three and just filled the cuvette with the next solution without rinsing out with distilled water at all you know and so th those are a couple possibilities uh, and so if you have something along that line uh, that that would get you your point now uh, just a, a disclaimer another disclaimer uh, you know these questions have have just come out I don't have a key uh, college board comes out with their official key in the summer, uh, late summer, sometime in the fall. Um, the, there are some answers on here that may not be correct completely, or some answers that they may give that might be different than what I'm giving. And, and both sometimes both are correct. And so just have to be flexible. Sometimes there are multiple correct answers for the same question. So hope you learned something from this. Uh, hope you uh, enjoyed this. If you did, give me that thumbs up if you would please and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Hope you join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together.